this video, I will be discussing why certain groups are ortho directors and why other groups are meta directors. And this is going to be a little complicated because it's going to involve the mechanisms of the reactions, specifically the step in which the wavelength intermediate gets formed, and all those resonance structures. What we're going to be doing is drawing sets of resonance structures and comparing which set is better in several different cases. We're, we're going to do really three different cases. First one we're going to start with is uh, toluene. Okay, so if we have a molecule that has an alkyl group on it, and that will serve as a model for any alkyl group, whether it's ethyl or propyl or any other group. Um, and we're going to bring in the electrophile, which is the positive thing. And I'm just going to use E plus as an example. Um, and we're going to attach it to each of the three different possible positions. So we're going to consider ortho, we're going to consider meta, and we're going to consider para. Now what I've drawn is I've drawn the hydrogen explicitly at the ortho position here, and at the meta position here, and at the para position here. But remember that there are hydrogens on all five positions. It's just that I've drawn them specifically in those positions because those are the places we're going to try to replace. So in the first one, if we do the attack of the electrophile on the benzene ring, remember that what happens is the electrophile and the hydrogen will end up being attached to the same carbon. The methyl group will still be where it is. And of course, we'll end up with a positive charge in that ring. What we have to consider then is that what are the possible resonance structures we could draw? Well, remember, you can draw one in which the positive charge is ortho to the place where the electrophile attacked. You have another one where the positive charge is para to where the electrophile attacked, methyl group still being there, and a third resonance structure in which the positive charge is on the other side, other ortho side, to where the electrophile attacked. So we have those three resonance structures. And again, you'll always have three resonance structures, or I should say at least three resonance structures for the Wayland intermediate. And again, they will always be positive charge on one side ortho to the electrophile, on the other side ortho to the electrophile, and directly across para to the electrophile. Don't pay attention to where the group that was originally there is attached yet. Just keep it attached at the position it was attached to. And make sure that you're drawing your resonance structure so that you have one carbon that's sp3 hybridized, in other words, four single bonds to it, it's saturated, it's a tetrahedral carbon, and the other five carbons in your benzene ring are sp2 hybridized, which means they either have a positive charge or they have a double bond to them, not both. You can't have any carbons with both a double bond and a positive charge. And you can't have any carbons with neither a double bond or a positive charge. So notice every carbon in all three of my resonance structures either has a positive charge or a double bond, except for that one, which is the or which is the carbon or the electrophile attacked. Okay. We'll come back and look at that set of three in a minute, but let's go ahead and do the same thing for attack at the meta hydrogen to where the methyl group was. So what I'm going to do here is draw the skeleton three times. I think this is a good exercise. We know the methyl group has to be there. We know that in this case, the electrophile has attacked at the meta position, so we're going to draw the hydrogen and the electrophile both at that same carbon. And we're going to do, and I'm not going to put any double bonds or positive charges in it yet. I'm just going to draw the skeleton. And the reason I'm doing it this way is because I have to remember that the skeleton doesn't change. The carbons and the hydrogens and, and the E group all have to stay in exactly the same location when we're doing resonance structures. So I've drawn the skeleton exactly the same three times, and now it's just a matter of putting in the positive charges and the double bonds. I think it's probably best to put the positive charges in on all three of them before you put the double bonds in. So where can the positive charge go? It can go on one side, ortho, toward the electrophile attacked. It can go on the other side, ortho, toward the electrophile attacked. Or it can go para to where the electrophile attacked, that is directly across. So either of the two ortho positions or the para position to where the electrophile attacked. Notice that the methyl group has nothing to do with it yet. All right. Now that I put the positive charges in, I'm going to put the double bonds in, and they have to go where? 
You tell me. Can it go here? No, because then we got five bonds of that carbon. It can go here. Can it go here? No, because then we have a double bond and a positive charge on the same carbon. But it can go here. So there's the two double bond locations for that positive charge. For this one, they're going to be here and here. And for this one, they're going to be there and there. That's the most common difficulty that people have with this, is putting double bonds in their own places. Make sure that you're putting in two double bonds and a positive charge located in such a way that you never have the double bond to that carbon okay, and never have a double bond to the carbon with a positive charge. Okay, so that constitutes the three resonance structures for the meta attack. Now you might ask, why are we doing meta since we already know that a methyl group is an ortho para director? But what we want to do is explain why. So we have to consider what happens if it attacks uh, ortho and what happens if it attacks meta and see if we can explain why it doesn't go meta. So we'll draw the three resonance structures for meta attack, even though we know that's not going to be what actually happens. Now I'm going to let you draw the three uh, skeletons, remembering that this time we're going to attach the electrophile on this carbon. So this skeleton is going to have the methyl group here, the hydrogen and the electrophile attached there. Okay. And then what I'm recommending you do is draw that exact same skeleton without putting in the double bonds of the positive charge yet two more times. So go ahead and do that on your paper. Okay, you might want to turn off the video or if you're done already, leave it on. But I'm going to go ahead and draw them here. So Let's close that off with a bracket. Okay, there are the three resonance structures, or the three skeletons. Now we need to put in the positive charges. Where will they go? Remember, ortho to where the electrophile attacked on one side, so let's put the positive charge there, ortho to where the electrophile attacked. Ortho to where the electrophile attacked on the other side, that would be right there. And para to where the electrophile attacked, that would be right there. So that's the three locations for the positive charge. And then we need to put in the double bonds. And again, this is where most people have trouble. So I'm going to let you fill in the double bonds on those three structures that I have drawn on the board and see if you agree with me as to where they should go. They're very specific. There's no choice in this case. So turn off the video, draw in the double bonds, and then turn it back on again, and I will draw the answers for you. Okay, here we go. Here and here. Here and here. Here and here. If you did not get them in those locations, there's something wrong with your structure and you need to check out why. Either you have five bonds of carbon, or you have a double bond and a positive charge on the same carbon, or you have a carbon with no double bond or no positive charge and no positive charge, which also isn't possible. Every carbon has to have both a double bond, I mean either a double bond to it or a positive charge to it, like that. Okay, so here are here's the array of resonance structures that we need to consider in this particular case. Looking at these three resonance structures, which come from ortho attack, these three that come from meta attack, and these three that come from para attack, what do you see that's different about these three sets? All three of them have three resonance structures, so it's not the number of resonance structures that's different. What you'll notice is that in this resonance structure right here, the positive charge is on a tertiary carbon. So, tertiary carbon. That one's secondary, and that one's secondary. What about in the case of the meta? <coughs> Excuse me, secondary, <coughs> secondary, secondary. So this one was a secondary, secondary, tertiary hybrid. It's a carbocation that's partly secondary, partly secondary, and partly tertiary. This one is secondary, secondary, secondary. And what about the para attack? Secondary, secondary, ah, tertiary. So both ortho and the para attack are better because one of the three resonance structures in each case is a tertiary resonance structure. That explains why a methyl group or any other alkyl group that gives rise to a tertiary carbon at that position and a tertiary carbon at that position is better. 
Okay, so orthopara directing alkyl groups is explained. Let's move on to another example. Let's look at one of the highly activating groups. Let's look at a methoxy group or anything with a at least one pair of electrons on the atom next to the benzene ring. As we've seen, those are always going to be orthopair directed groups as well. Let's see if we can figure out why. Well, in each case, we're going to look at ortho, we're going to look at meta, and we're going to look at para. And in each case, we're going to bring in an electrophile, and it's going to attach at the ortho position, at the meta position, or the parent position, and we're going to draw a set of three resonance structures for each. Okay. Um, I'm going to recommend that you turn off the video and just draw out all three resonance structures for ortho, all three resonance structures for meta, and all three resonance structures for para. I'm going to go ahead and do it myself. tedious because you got to do all of these resonance structures in every case, but it's important in order to understand why some groups are orthopara and some groups are meta directors. Okay, there's the three main skeletons. Brackets, and I'm going to go ahead and draw all of the ones here. Now I'm going to give you a clue. Don't put a bracket on the end here. I'll tell you why here in just a minute. So I've drawn three skeletons there. And then I'm going to put in a positive charges here, here, and here, and the double bonds here and here, here and here, here and here. So there's the three resonance structures for ortho attack. Same thing with meta. I'm going to draw the three skeletons. Skeletons, and then put in, <clears throat> excuse me, put in the positive charges. One ortho on this side, one ortho on that side, and one para toward the electrophile attacked. And then put in the double bonds here and here, here and here, here and here. And okay. there's the three for the meta attack. And then similarly for para attack, I'm going to draw the skeleton two more times. Total of three. Okay. And then I'm going to put in the positive charge on one side ortho toward the electrophile attack, on the other side ortho toward the electrophile attack, and para toward the electrophile attack. And then I'm going to put in a double bond here, 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 here. And here, here. And then let's look at those three sets of resonance structures. Okay, clearly there, uh, there is one important resonance structure in this set and one important one in this set. And that is this one in which the positive charge is next to the oxygen, and this one in which the positive charge is next to the oxygen. So clearly those are important for ortho and para, but there is no similar one for the meta position. There's no positive charge right next to the oxygen in any of these three resonance structures. So the question is, is that a good thing or a bad thing to have that positive charge next to the oxygen? And at first glance, you might say, well, that's a bad thing, because you know that oxygen is electronegative, 
pulling electrons away, right, just like fluorine pulls electrons away. And pulling electrons away from a positive charge is a bad thing. You really don't want that to happen. I notice that that's not a tertiary carbocation because it's not another carbon. Tertiary means three other carbons attached. So the, the really sort of weird thing here is it seems like that's a bad thing, and it seems like this would be better because it doesn't have any positions where the oxygen is pulling electrons away from a positive charge. But notice, here's the key. Don't forget, there are lone pairs of electrons on that oxygen. And that means that in this particular case, because there's a positive charge there, we can draw a fourth resonance structure. And that's why I told you not to put a bracket on the end of that set just yet. So we can actually draw a fourth resonance structure in which the positive charge goes up onto the oxygen. So that's a good thing because we can draw more resonance structures. Furthermore, that's a particularly good resonance structure. Why? Because the octet will satisfied for everything in that resonance structure, whereas not in any of these other ones we've drawn to date, you can't, uh, you have to say that there's no octet on them. And there's no way you can do that with these because there's no way the positive charge is next to where the oxygen is, so you can't bring the pair of electrons down to form a positive charge on the oxygen, but you can in this case. So we can draw a fourth resonance structure. in which the positive charge ends up on the oxygen in a resonance structure that follows the octet rule. So not only can you draw more resonance structures in ortho attack and para attack, but the fourth one that you can draw is an even better resonance structure. So that's a strongly uh, activating and strongly suggesting that the ortho para attack will occur, whereas the meta attack will not occur. So that's why it happens in those ortho pair directing groups that have lone pairs next to the benzene ring. And let's do a third example, and this will be the end of it. Let's look at one of the ones where there's a double bond O next to the benzene ring. In other words, one of the deactivating groups, one of the electron withdrawing groups. So let's look at Let's say a ketone in which there's a double bond O there. And that will serve as the same sort of thing as if there's a nitro group there, or if there's a cyanide group there, or if there's a carboxylic acid group there, or anything with a double bond O. And we're going to look at the ortho. We're going to look at the meta. And we're going to look at the para position. And again, I'm going to suggest that you, I don't, I'm going to continue the video and draw them on the board, but I suggest that you stop the video and draw the resonance structures in each of these cases. We're going to react it with an electrophile. We're going to attach the electrophile ortho. We're going to attach a metal. We're going to attach a para. And we're going to have at least three resonance structures for each of these three modes of attack. So here we go.
completed the three resonance structures for each of the three modes of attack. And by the way, I should point out that your resonance structures may be in a different order than my resonance structures are. That's fine. They don't have to be in any particular order as long as you have ortho on one side, ortho on the other side, and para to where the electrophile attacked. Para on one side, or para to where the electrophile attacked, ortho on one side, and ortho on the other side. And para to where the electrophile attacked, ortho on one side, and ortho on the other side. Doesn't matter the order that they come in. Right, now let's look at the set of three resonance structures for each of these. And notice that the special one, and there's always going to be a special one in the ortho and the para attack mode, this one's a special one in which the positive charge is right next to the C double bond O. This one doesn't have any special ones where the positive charge is right next to the C double bond O. That's always true in meta attack of any sort. And this one also has a positive charge on a carbon right next to the C double bond O. So the question is, is this particularly good to have that positive charge next to the C double bond O or particularly bad? And the answer is bad. This is not a good thing. And why? And the answer is because this group is pulling electrons away from that positive charge. And you never want to have electrons pulled away from something that's already positive. Now, you may be thinking, and I hope you are thinking, yeah, but can't you draw a fourth resonance structure from this one right here? And the answer is, no, you cannot. You can try. You can actually move this pair down into there, but then what you'll end up with is a positive charge on the oxygen and not an octet. And that's a really bad thing to have a positive charge on oxygen, but not fulfill the octet. That's a different thing, and I will draw it right here in the middle so that you can still see it on the screen. This is a completely different kind of positive oxygen. That's a good thing than this kind of oxygen. in which you don't have a double bond there, and you don't have an octet on the oxygen, and you just have a plain old positive charge there. That's bad. So that's a bad thing. Anytime you have an electron withdrawing group, nitro, carboxylic acid, any kind of C double bond O, cyanide, CF3, CCL3, or NH3 positive next to a positive charge, that's bad. So in essence, this resonance structure doesn't exist. And therefore, in essence, ortho and para only have two resonance structures, and therefore the meta is better. It's not that the meta attack is particularly good, it's that the ortho and the para attack are particularly bad when you have a deactivating or an electron withdrawing group there. Well, that will end the presentation, except for one more thing, and that is what happens with halogen. And I will let you work out for yourself that weird thing that goes on with halogens where they are deactivating but ortho para directing. And what I want you to do is draw the three resonance structures, or perhaps four resonance structures, and you'll have to decide, in the ortho and the meta and the para case for attack on, let's say, chlorobenzene. Remember, there are pairs of electrons on the chlorine. And ask yourself, why is it deactivating but ortho para directing? We'll talk about that in class, because that one requires a little bit of extra discussion. Thank you for your attention.